We hold these truths to be self-evident, that all men are created equal, that they are endowed by their creator with certain unalienable rights, that among these are life, liberty, and the pursuit of happiness. Our founding fathers used what should have been something very solemn, our formal separation from Mother England, to instead give voice to celebration. It has been a traditional practice every July 4th since 1776 and will occur again, God willing, in another 25 days when we observe our Independence Day for the 239th time. It's worth noting that our founders did not guarantee our happiness. Instead, they simply declared our right to pursue it. Still, those who visited these shores found smiles by the score. In 1792, a British journalist expressed amazement at the good humor of Americans, a mindset that endured another war with our English cousins 20 years later. Then, another two decades after that unpleasantness, yet another Fleet Street scribe wrote of Americans and our unwillingness to complain. Internationally, there remains a stereotype of the smiling America. That's especially the case in Russia, where it's said if someone is smiling, they're either a fool, a criminal, or an American. But the insulting tone of neo-Soviet propaganda should not prevent us from a more candid assessment of our national attitude. The 1958 book entitled The Ugly American decried the overbearing, over-the-top behavior of some of our fictional fellow countrymen, and it became all too real in some of our foreign policy decisions of the 1960s. Yet, a more apt context for contentment, or the lack thereof, is not found internationally, it occurs individually. Christine Johnson of WCBS-TV reports on the latest scientific findings about happiness. Now, after decades of research and a dozen clinical trials, researchers at the world-renowned Mayo Clinic say that they've actually cracked the code to being happy and published it in a handbook. The human mind, experts say, is instinctively restless, wandering from good thoughts to sad thoughts, scary thoughts, and everything in between. But if we learn to command our thoughts, shifting perspective away from the negative and embrace the positive, we will be happier. And perhaps one of the biggest hindrances to being happy, according to research, is thinking too much of oneself. Now, it is all well and good that the Mayo Clinic has published a medical handbook on happiness. In fact, we can recall in the 1950s, Dr. Norman Vincent Peale wrote The Power of Positive Thinking. But it's apparent that there are much older documents that really point the way for us. You and I spoke just a couple of minutes ago about the Declaration of Independence. Indeed, uh, as we discuss this, this whole notion of attitude, modern research, as was just pointed out, indicates it is interaction and interdependence rather than independence that makes the real difference in how we feel. With all due respect, to medical science, it's evident that our outlook really revolves around the realm of the spiritual. Over 2,000 years ago, it was summed up this way, do unto others as you would have them do unto you. The golden rule and the one who gave voice to it, he's the real source of happiness. At least that's the way I see it. Now, before we go, some of your comments that came in via social media. The first comment comes from Paul, who's concerned about the border, and he writes, J.D., our border between Texas and Mexico is 1,200 miles long, the distance between New Orleans, where I live now, and where I grew up in Philly, and remains wide open. Despite acts adopted by the Congress, this marks the 23rd consecutive year our presidents have willfully ignored closing it. Maybe next time. One can only hope. Our next comment comes from Jerry, who watched our interview with General Hayden last night, and he writes, I agree with General Hayden as far as getting neighbors involved in the war in the Middle East. We must understand if we leave that region, the war is lost. The Iraqi army was a joke in 1991 when the soldiers were surrendering to news reporters, perhaps a multinational force led by King Abdullah of Jordan. Otherwise, we leave, they lose. Well, we are going to take our leave right now. We will see you tomorrow night. Stay brave, stay free, stay tuned.